Big session today. Let's go. This is the joys of uh, solo filmmaking, is uh, trying to get a cool shot. Uh, means everything looks pretty terrible behind the scenes, but never mind. Uh, we're going to go find somewhere uh, to film. Looks like I found somewhere to film with my incredibly compact um, camera setup. So yeah, super portable. Right, today we're talking all about five things. That was ten. Five things, five things that you can do to promote your book sales on a long-term basis. So we've talked in previous videos about stuff you can do ahead of your launch to kind of build up excitement and anticipation and sales during a promotion or launch week. Um, but today we're looking at what to do going forward so everyone's focused all on the launches and the promos but what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis to keep sales coming through quick couple of announcements before we jump in to all the juicy stuff number one is i've been looking at my stats for youtube and i found that about 70 percent of people watching this video aren't subscribed to the channel which is just crazy so every time you log into youtube or you go to the home page youtube is going to be trying to figure out what you're actually interested in watching if you hit the subscribe button on stuff you like then youtube will recommend stuff that's similar so not only will you get a notification when my new videos come out uh, but youtube is going to get a lot better at figuring out what you're actually interested in so if you've been enjoying these videos just make sure you hit the subscribe button underneath this video hit the notification bell um, and you'll make sure you'll get all the new videos sent straight to you and the second announcement is I'm going to be opening up my flagship training program, Your First 10,000 Readers, next week. And for the first time ever, I'm doing a huge writer's bundle. So this is kind of in honour of National Novel Writing Month, which is November this month. And hundreds of thousands of people around the world are going to be trying to write a novel in 30 days. So I'm putting together this amazing bundle that's going to help take you from no idea to published and then building an audience and making sales in in record time. This is the most comprehensive bundle that I've ever done and it's probably going to be the only time I'm going to do it as well. So you're going to get a ton of extra stuff. Link in the description. Go check it out. It opens up next week and all the details are there for you. So with that out of the way, let's get into the meat and vegetables of today's session and let's jump back in time a couple of days and go through everything. Right, gym time. And this is my personal trainer, Nathan, who didn't want to be on camera, so this is his feet. Nathan, what's your number one tip for fat loss and nutrition? Creating a calorie deficit. Genius. Could you move your feet a bit as well? And this is the next fun one. Looking forward to this. So we're done at the gym and I'm predictably wrecked and uh, Mrs. S called and uh, I have to now go and check on the horses because last night there was fireworks. It's like bonfire night season here in the UK. So everyone's letting off fireworks. The weather's awful. It's soaking wet and I don't have any suitable footwear. So I have to get my nice trainers and walk across the field because uh, if I drive through the field, I'm going to churn it up. So fun times for me. Uh, but yeah, we're talking about sustaining sales with your books, especially on Amazon where there's kind of more options for you. And uh, the first thing I want to talk about is um, KDP Select. So being exclusive to Amazon and getting access to that Kindle Unlimited catalog is a huge benefit to anyone who's kind of focusing their sales on Amazon. So um, we're going to have two choices. We can have our books up everywhere in the world or we have them just on Amazon. And there's kind of pros and cons. Kindle Unlimited and KDP Select and being exclusive to Amazon does make your sales higher on the Amazon platform. If your book is in Kindle Unlimited, then people with a, a Prime membership and a Kindle Unlimited membership can borrow books for free or for like $10 a month. It's like Netflix for books. And then you get paid a certain amount for every page read. And it's like a fraction of a penny 
for every page read but then you know longer books especially can do really well when you add all of those up over time so that's one great way of getting extra discoverability and you know it's free to do and you do tend to get more exposure on Amazon whether or not that makes up for not being on the other platforms kind of depends on your circumstances and where you want to be long term but KDP Select it's only a 90 day kind of window so if you don't currently have a big audience outside of Amazon and like your sales on iBooks and Nook and Kobo and all the others are like really really low um, then it might be worth considering because it's something that's quite easy to do and you can always come out of it later if you want to start building up that wide uh, that wide platform and that wide readership so uh, but it also gives you a couple of promotional options um, called Kindle countdown deals and free promotion so with a countdown deal you can drop the price of your book for a limited period usually a couple of days and um, you'll get a little timer on the book page counting down which kind of helps sell the book uh, but more importantly is you can be in the 70% royalty bracket so your book's 2 dollars or more you're earning 70% you can drop that down to 99 cents and still earn 70% so normally you'd only earn 35% which is you know really hard to make a living with um, but if you've got a promotion going with a big advertiser like BookBub or a combination of the other kind of big email advertisers and you've dropped your price down for that promo then with the Kindle countdown deal you can double your royalties so for a lot of people um, if they can shift a few thousand copies during a 99 cent promo being able to double your royalties makes a big difference so that's something worth considering as well um, and also free promos so you can make your book free um, for up to you know five days in every 90 day enrollment period and during that free window you can promote it uh, and in a lot of cases you can just leave it and it will get loads of downloads and then if you have a reader magnet where you're encouraging people to leave Amazon join your email list in return for a free book and um, then that can get you hundreds of subscribers who will then later buy your future books so there's quite a few benefits to KDP select the big downside is of course then you have to be exclusive um, and if it's not working then you still have to stick with that 90 day exclusivity period um, so there are some downsides and it can be a bit unpredictable as to how much you're actually going to earn from page reads um, but for someone starting out especially if you don't have that big audience outside of Amazon um, it's a really easy way to cash in on some of the exposure tools um, that Amazon has so that's kind of like my first tip is have a think about whether you want to do that now leave me a comment if you've got any questions about whether it's right for you drop it into the comments I'll answer best I can I'll point you in the right direction uh, but that's a very easy way so that's point number one um, the next thing I want to talk about is paid advertising all right let's take a look then oh it's nasty I have not got the right shoes for this not the best weather it's pretty good though might just ignore that sign next time. Oh, crap. All right, so this is what happens when you're filming stuff, not watching where you're going. Um, you just fall over in mud. Ah, definitely not the right shoes. Oh, there we go. Yeah, the weather's awful, um, but at least it's not raining. It still looks nice. I mean, this is the cool thing about autumn. You don't want to be outside, but it's nice to look at. Oh. I see horses. Right, it's the usual thing then. Need to make sure they have water, which they don't really have. So, you guys thirsty? Why the long face? Shameless horse jokes. talk about advertising courses are done and I want to talk a bit about advertising so when I say advertising and um, what I mean here is um, the pay-per-click kind of advertising like on Amazon ads Facebook ads um, and book bubs pay-per-click platform of course so this can be very very powerful but it's very popular as well which means that the costs 
that you pay for each click um, go up. And we've seen this in the last year or so especially is uh, we're kind of approaching at the bottom end sort of 50 cents a click and in some cases um, a dollar a click. Now we've run tons and tons of ads um, <laughs> over months and months and we've found that these click costs are creeping up and up and up. Especially at scale, um, it can get really quite dangerous. So, you know, if you're kind of playing around with sort of five, ten dollars a day and you're finding these niches and these small niches, not so much of an issue. But when you're trying to drive, you know, dozens or hundreds of clicks every day to a particular book, you can be paying, you know, up to a dollar a click. And this could still be profitable, but unless you've got that series of books, you know, a deep series, really good read-through rates, you know, you're going to be losing kind of money on at least the first three books, maybe four or five books even, and the profit's only going to come after that. So if you don't have a long series and you don't have that read-through rate, then advertising can get very expensive very, very quickly if you don't know what you're doing. So the advice I give for anyone who's looking to invest in ads hey, is to really think about optimising um, those books, which means having a look at the conversion rate. So how many people are actually buying it? If you have 100 people land on your book page, how many people are actually going to buy the book? Um, how many people are going to click your ad? What's your click through rate? And those two things together are going to give you a really good idea of how profitable ads are going to be. So as a sort of baseline rule of thumb, if you're getting sort of 0.1% click through rate and you're getting a 10% conversion rate on a book that's sort of 3.99, 4.99, um, then you stand to make kind of a decent profit if you've got sort of four to six books in that series and your read-through rate is good. I hope everyone's enjoying horse vision, by the way. So if that's the case, then advertising is something that can definitely work for you at a pretty good scale. If that's not the case, then be very, very careful. No, you can't see this, but she's, she's like right there, right there, sniffing the phone. So I'll just hold it. Now she's, she's eating my impromptu camera stand. So if you have the read-through rate and you have the conversion rate, then ads is something that you can definitely invest in quite heavily and build that scale up. But if you don't, um, then it's something to look at. So can you optimize the number of people who are converting when they land on your page? Can you optimize your covers and your descriptions um, to make that click-through rate and that conversion rate better? Um, can you have um, a better read-through rate? Can you link to your other books in the first book that you're advertising? These are all things that you can do um, to optimize that conversion rate and that return on your investment. So advertising is by no means a slam dunk and it depends on your budget and your goals as to what method you want to go for. Um, but it's something to definitely keep in your arsenal. So whether you want to spend sort of five, ten dollars a day or you're looking at hundreds of dollars a day, um, your approach is going to be different and the potential is there to make some great profit on it um, as long as you're optimizing that flow of traffic into conversions. And as always, there's some links underneath this video where we go into this um, in a lot more detail. But for now, we're going to move on um, to the third thing that you can do to keep those sales going. See you later, guys. Right, third thing you can do to keep sales going is uh, one of my favorites because uh, it doesn't really cost anything and it helps build relationships and that's cross promotion. So in simple terms, this means finding other authors with a sort of similar audience size and reach to you um, and teaming up with them to sort of um, cross promote each other's books and special offers and discounts and other deals like that. And it's a super simple concept and it really just involves making those connections with the right people and then running these cross promotions in the right way to drive the right kind of traffic to your books. And um, I won't go into it in too much detail here because I'm um, just stepped in a giant puddle and uh, my feet are very wet, but I'm going to link underneath this video blog post all about cross promotions. I'll break it all down for you. So um, let's talk about the next method. Ah, uh, okay, this is gonna be fun. Right, I'm covered in mud. My car is now covered in mud. Um, I'm starving hungry, so I've been to the gym, haven't eaten enough today. Um, so we're gonna go home, gonna eat something, um, and then we'll talk about the next thing you can do. And this all comes down to audience building. It's probably the most important thing um, that you can do. So. Let's go get into it. All right, we're back and we're talking about option number four for building ongoing sales. And that's all about email marketing. So I'm a huge fan of email marketing because this is probably the only online platform that you can really control where you can have a direct line of communication between you and the people who actually buy your stuff. So if you're selling books on Amazon, building a following on Facebook, Twitter, other social media platforms, 
putting videos on YouTube, whatever it might be, um, that's a great way of reaching people, but you don't control those platforms. So the things you can say, when you can say them, that's all controlled by somebody else. And if those platforms decide that they're gonna change their algorithms, change their policies, um, then that can leave you in a very difficult situation. But with email marketing, when you build an email list, then you have control over that platform. That's a business asset that you own for life. And generally speaking, um, the bigger the email list, the more clicks you can get. And this game is all about driving clicks, driving traffic. How many clicks can you get to your book? So when you compare that with the advertising options we talked about earlier, where you're paying 50 cents a dollar per click. Think about all the free clicks that you're going to be getting with email marketing. There's a lot of programs out there where you don't have to pay a penny until you hit sort of 1500, 2000 subscribers. And even if you're getting like a five or 10% click through rate on that, that's 200 clicks for every email that you send out, which if you were using um, pay-per-click advertising could be costing you hundreds of dollars, but you're getting it for free. And generally speaking, the clicks that you get from email marketing are going to perform a lot better than they would from ads. So it's a very, very important asset to build. And when you start building in automation into this process as well, so when someone signs up to your email list, you can send them a series of automated emails. This is a great way of introducing them to your other books. So let's say you're using reader magnets, you're offering a book in your series for free when someone signs up. Um, when they join, after a certain period of time, you can schedule emails to to go out to tell them about your other books. And then when your next book is ready to be launched, you have that built-in audience of people who have already demonstrated that they're interested in your work. So when you automate this, you can be driving clicks, driving sales to your books, to your back catalog 24 seven. And all you have to worry about then is getting that traffic through in the first place. So you're probably starting to see how all of these methods kind of join together. You know, you can use ads, we can use KDP Select, we can use cross promotions to drive traffic to our books, to our website, and then we're using email marketing to take all that traffic, turn it into email addresses, get those people off Amazon and onto your platform, and then we can control the messaging and control the marketing and send those automated emails out. Get those clicks at a fraction of the price that you'd be paying for traditional advertising and really drive scale that way. And again, resources underneath this video if you wanna check out this in more detail. But for now, um, we're gonna move on to option number five. Okay, I didn't really wanna move. Uh, so option number five um, is another type of paid advertising, and this is really aimed more at driving um, a peak of sales through in a short window of time. So um, I've mentioned before advertisers like BookBub, um, and these are a little bit different from like Facebook ads or Google ads. YouTube ads, Amazon ads, where you're paying sort of for the click or for the impression. Um, with these kind of ads, you're paying to have your book featured in these companies' email lists. And BookBub, for example, has a reader list of millions, I think three million plus readers. And again, this is a business that's based all around an email list. So as we said in the previous step, if you're building your own sort of mini book bub, then this is something that you can have whenever you want as well. But to really build that scale up, getting access to other people's audiences is a great way to drive traffic as well, especially during those short windows. So during a promotion, or if you're trying to hit one of the major bestseller lists, if you're approaching sites like BookBub and um, Free Booksy or Bargain Booksy, Fussy Librarian, I'll, I'll link some more underneath, you can check them out. But you can stack these up and you can get a lot of sales through in a very short period of time. So if you're wanting to run a promotion or you're trying to hit a bestseller list, or sometimes if you're launching as well and you can get into these advertisers, and that could be a very powerful way of getting your book up the charts. And this is something that you can schedule sort of quarterly or monthly, and you can cycle through your different books. And again, this is working in tandem with the other steps we've talked about. So for example, if you're in KDP Select, you can run countdown deals and free promotions, and you can cycle through your books and run some of these sort of stacked email blast promos every month or every quarter. You can schedule them in advance and keep traffic going, keep sales going, keep building your email list 
that way. So that can be incredibly powerful as well. But again, as I said, you know, we're not using these methods in complete isolation. You know, we're not kind of relying 100% on paid ads. We're not relying 100% on building an email list with reader magnets. We're not relying just on being in KDP select. You know, what these things by themselves don't work as well as combining them together. So it's more of a strategic view than just playing around with different tactics. You know, each step and each method has a different reasoning behind it, a different logic and a different goal behind it. And when you combine them all together, it's a great way of continually driving traffic, driving sales, building your audience and building your exposure over the long term. And once you've kind of built this system, this sort of process out and the machine is working, then it's something that you can kind of just maintain on a daily basis rather than having to spend hours and hours and hours every day trying to figure out, you know, where is your traffic going to come from? Where are your sales going to come from? You've got this process all mapped out and all built and it's something that you can use long term, essentially for the rest of your career. And those are the top five things you can do to grow your book sales long term. And as I said earlier on in the video, if you like this video, make sure you click subscribe. And if you're interested in going into a ton more detail on everything we've been talking about recently, you'd like me to take you through everything and um, step by step, A to Z, no stone left unturned. Check out the next public opening of my flagship training course, your first 10,000 readers, along with the extra writer's bundle that I've got set up for you. It's opening next week. We've had over 5,000 authors all across the world go through the program, many of which have gone on to become full-time career authors. So check that out, first link underneath the video, and I'll see you all again very, very soon.